Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. Let us observe this surgery. This is a cataract with genular dehiscence from 3 o'clock to 7 o'clock. So we have started this surgery. This is the main wound with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratome. A side port is made on the left side of the main wound. And now I'm going to plug the uh, genular dehiscent area with Hylocoat, which is a combination of sodium hyaluronate and chondroitin sulfate. Just plugging this area. Then an air bubble is injected into the anterior chamber and tripan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule. The idea of plugging the dehiscent area is to prevent this dye going into the anterior vitreous. If it goes into the anterior vitreous, we lose all the red glow. So we should plug the dehiscent area with you know hylocoat and then any combination of uh, sodium hyaluronate and chondroitin sulfate and then uh, start next uh, and then start staining. Now see the rexis. The rexis is should be made in this way eccentric lot of capsular material should be at the dehiscent area and in the area where the caps where the capsule bag is attached no that area we can go to periphery so the rexis is near the pupil or the border near the margin of the iris superiorly and away from the margin of the pupil inferiorly eccentric rexis but ultimately this is going to be centered once we place the lens. Hydro dissection is done and CTR is placed in the capsular bag. The leading end goes into the capsular bag and gently it is you know, pushed into the bag. As we come near the trailing end, I take a Sinsky hook in my left hand the trailing end is placed in the anterior chamber with the McPherson's forceps and the Sinsky hook places the trailing end in the capsular bag in this way. Now the bag is supported and now after injecting viscoelastic substance I am dividing the nucleus with the pre-chopper designed by me. You can do direct chop also but I am habituated to this and this has some advantages in weak jonule and dehiscent jonule because the irrigation pressure of the uh, you know handpiece is not there you are doing under viscoelastic substance you are supporting the equator with the nuclear sustainer and in this case you are supporting this piece superiorly and then you are supporting the equator for the inferior hemineucleus and dividing it into two pieces Gently, you have to do all these steps. If you are not habituated to this pre-chop, you have to do direct chop very gently. And now I, am, I have to get a free nuclear fragment. This one is a free nuclear fragment. Other fragments are not actually free. They have some joining with the other pieces. So I have to hold one piece and manually separate the other piece come here hold this piece and manually separate it from the other one and once it is separate it comes easily to the tip all piece bring all the pieces to the you know, center of the anterior chamber and then and now this is the other piece and this is the larger piece. Artesanic energy used is 70% in, in linear mode and continuous ultrasound used intermittently. This is the last nuclear piece. A flow rate is 40 and vacuum is 400 and bottle height is about uh, 50 to 60 centimeter. This is the last nuclear piece have to be very careful and protecting the posterior capsule with the ball tipped nuclear sustainer 
the nuclear thustic capsule is intact the capsular bag is filled up with viscoelastic substance and now we have to start uh, removing the cortex i make a side port at 7 o'clock and start cleaning the cortex from from superior aspect because there is no joinular dehiscence in this area so start cleaning the cortex from the area where the joinule is intact joinule is strong and finally you remove the cortex from the area where the joinul is weak. Though you have supported the bag with a CTR, always remove the cortex from the area first from the area where the joinul is intact. And now after cleaning the cortex, I find that a piece of epinucleus has gone into the anterior vitreous. We have to do something about it, otherwise it's co it will cause severe disturbance in vision. The patient will complain of something black moving in front of the eye. The lens is placed in the capsular bag and I inject canacord. Canacord is tramsinolone acetate into the anterior vitreous and find that there is a lot of vitreous strands coming into the anterior chamber from the area where there is genuine adhesions. So I plan parse plan antivitectomy because there is a big piece of epinucleus in the anterior vitreous. And now I try to go into the anterior vitreous, you know, I, may, I try to place this trocker, but this trocker was not very sharp and didn't go. So I make a small peritomy and I ask for a uh, MBA knife and through this uh, you know, initial puncture, partial puncture, I go into the anterior vitreous and take the 23G vitectomy cutter. First we have to check that it is cutting and aspirating nicely and now I go into the anterior vitreous and do the vitectomy cutting. Antivitectomy through pars plena is the ideal and all of us anterior segment surgeons should learn this. If we find it difficult to you know, place the tracker in a soft eye, uh, then we can do in this way. We can just make a small sclerotomy, go into the antivitreous with a sharp knife, with a, uh, it's not difficult to go into the antivitreous. Do the persplan antivitectomy nicely. The epinuclear piece has been removed. Now I come into the anterior chamber and remove the vitreous stents that was uh, in the dehiscent area. All the vitreous stents that was there, uh, uh, they came out easily because it has been cut from the other side, from behind. Nicely cleaned. And now I go again into the antivitreous and remove. Uh, do some more vitectomy. When we do antivitectomy, the cutting port should be down towards the optic nerve. And at some points in this case, you will see that I am towards the posterior capsule, it should not be there. Uh, we may accidentally touch the posterior capsule and make a posterior capsulectomy. So the cutting port should direct towards the optic nerve, not towards the posterior capsule. Nice antivitectomy is done. And now, after doing antivitectomy, we have to close the sclerotomy. I am using a 10 nylon switcher. You can use 80 Vicryl or 70 Vicryl, whatever you want. I prefer this because this causes less irritation to the sclera. And if such a small sclerotomy wound, we can easily close by 10 or 9 nylon. And this is done and now I am using a releasable suture to close the conjunctival wound. Just make three loops and pull and cut. It was your releasable wound is made. Again some more can accord to finally check if there is some vitreous in the anterior chamber. At this time I need not go through the pass plana. Uh, I'll, if, there, if it is there, I will manage it through the limbal wounds. 
but I see that there is no vitreous strands in the anterior chamber. So the case is managed well. This is an edited video. The initial surgery took about 28 minutes. It has been edited to 12 minutes just for you, just to give you an idea how to do perspinal antivitectomy if you failed to place the trocker. All of us anti-segment surgeons are afraid of a trocker, but it should not. Trocker in this case also it could have gone if the trocker was sharp, but because a reused trocker and it didn't go. So now I am using moxifloxacin to close the side ports. Some amount of moxifloxacin will go into the anterior chamber also and this will prevent infection. Now see the post-op pictures. Cornea is clear, no corneal edema. This is the beauty of perspinal antivitectomy. There will be no corneal edema if you do vitectomy from the pars planar and see the optic nerve and see the macula. Everything is fine. The patient is heavy having 6 by 12 unaided vision. Thank you very much for your attention. Friends, stagnancy is death. We should not stay at on point in life. We lose all excitement, all charms of life if we stay at one point. If you have learned some technique and if you stay there, it is just a monotonous life. Always try to improve yourself. Always try different techniques. Always try to learn new things. The person you are today, you should be a better person tomorrow. Thank you very much.